The Fido Q1S is an SUV, a scooter utility vehicle with a rock solid frame built for storage and a super fun ride. The Fido makes you feel like a kid again. This is Chuck with Electric Scooter Guide, the leading source for electric scooter reviews. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel so that we can keep making videos like this one. With the comfort of a bicycle and the power of an electric motor, the Fido is effortlessly fun to ride. You can go a little further distance than you might want to pedal, and the way the Fido's built, there's plenty of space to stow your pickleball gear and hit the courts. The Fido is part fun, part utility, merging some of the best features of scooters and bicycles without being either. Standing on scooters, you have to keep an active rider stance and shift your weight to ride comfortably. And pedaling a bike definitely takes more effort than twisting a throttle. On the Fido, you don't have to think about how you're gonna ride, you can just jump on and kinda chill. The tires are bigger than most scooters, but small enough to keep you riding lower to the ground than on a bike. It's light and small enough to pop in your trunk and comes with built-in storage that doesn't come standard on scooters or bicycles. With a basket hanging from the handlebars and a large compartment centered in the Fido's frame, you've got space to carry almost anything from a bag of groceries to man's best friend. With most scooters, you have to throw on a backpack to carry everything you need. With the Fido, it bears the weight instead of you, which is why we've dubbed it a scooter utility vehicle or SUV. The Fido, unlike some electric scooters, is not intimidating. The larger tires, seated position, and leisurely pace are perfect for anyone looking for a more relaxed ride. The Fido is well built and comes with very few frills. We all rode the Fido and, even though we're different heights and sizes, we all felt pretty comfortable. So Chuck, what did you think of the Fido Q&S? I actually really like this scooter bike hybrid thing. It is fun. I get to feel like a kid again, like on a bike, you know, mm -hmm. with the handlebars. I'm low to the ground, so I feel fast and I can just be kind of lazy. So the scooter is like that real active kind of stance, right? And a bike, even more activity. This one, when I want to be lazy and I just want to chill ride, I actually really like it. I don't have a lot of bad things to say. You know, I felt the same. It was, it's something you don't really need to think a whole lot about. You don't have to get ready to grab the brakes and get your stance ready. The throttle was pretty much, you know, on or off. You just grab a fistful yeah. and, and motor simple. along. It's very simple. Simple, it just yeah. does it, just goes, yeah. yeah. What did you think of the, uh, the tires? Oh, you know what? So I always like the bigger the tire, the better. And so for this scooter, right, the bigger these tires are, the more I really feel secure when a rock or a twig or a curb or something like that comes up in the road, I don't feel so scared. Uh, whereas if I'm on a smaller tired scooter, I, you just gotta be more cautious. The big tires help a lot and it's got the suspension. It's yeah. pretty stiff in the back mm -hmm. and pretty good in the front. Yeah, felt a lot um, of nice travel here in the front. And altogether, I think just enough to where I never felt the need to get out of the seat. And, yeah, and the seat, I mean, I don't know if you can see here, but the seat is, uh, it's, yeah, it's got, got a lot a lot of a lot of cushion right there so you know you got multiple ways you know to cushion your ride and so it felt fun what do you think of the brakes it does have the two brakes and it's got a nice little grip on there um you know they're huge right as you can see here right those brakes are what 160 yeah, millimeter that's right. brakes which is about as big as we i mean i think that's bigger, bigger than, than like the pro scooters yeah. would be like 140. yeah the brakes for me i think were one of my favorite parts but i did end up in the emergency braking testing i almost always ended up a little bit on the front wheel i don't think for most people it may not be a, an issue but it's yeah. uh it definitely you know that short wheelbase yeah like i think for most people and for just like your normal not emergency stops it, i think it i think it performs fabulously I actually really appreciate a uh, twist throttle and I think this is the best iteration of the twist throttle and the reason being, if you can hold that oh, Paul, yeah. uh, is that it's only covering a third, the hand, the hand grip here and so you can twist it, make mm -hmm. sure it's not on, 
because this thing will go flying with the zero start, but you can twist it and then just hold it there. Or I love cruise control on slower scooters. I just don't li love them on default, yeah. right? Uh, there was a little bit of lag to the throttle that I felt when you're moving along, mm -hmm. it was about a full second between twisting the throttle and when yeah. it would engage. You know, I did, that, that part didn't bother me. However, the display, where, whereas the throttle was so good, the display was so bad. Yeah. It was really the one of my few kind of points of contention with this scooter is that the display has no speedometer. It's just the battery and you can barely see it. It's super dim, but hey, you know, they could have done a better job here. So the full range of this scooter, I was pleasantly surprised when you came back and it had 20.2 right? yes. miles of range. That's pretty legit. I think when you're looking at scooters that are on the smaller side, mm -hmm getting to 20 there's that trust factor i guess the what do you call it range anxiety that you don't that i don't really have on this scooter uh, because of that small mm -hmm. size battery i just yeah i was surprised yeah you thought it, it was going to go not as go as far but then i think when you figure out how the acceleration is and the top speed then you kind of like okay now it really makes sense that it's going to go far because acceleration right was 6.7 seconds to 15 miles per hour. That's right, yeah, it was 6.7 seconds. To Very on the slow side, yeah. it's not the speed demon. And, and speaking of slow, this top speed of 16.4 miles an hour, I think that's the other place the range comes from. You know, you get mm -hmm. that, uh, you just slower is gonna give you longer range every yeah. time. 16.7 so. is still like not, I mean, when you're considering, you know, a, a normal, you know, bicycle on the road mm -hmm. or a shared scooter, of course you're gonna fly by those guys, but when you're comparing it against other thousand dollar scooters, right? Those are typically going above 20, even yeah. you know closer to 25 miles an hour. And this one is definitely not as fast. You know, this thing did pleasantly surprise me on the hill climb. Uh, it was not you know the fastest getting up the hill, but with a 250 watt motor, I thought it was going to join the club of scooters which didn't make it up the hill <laughs> yeah. at all. So and it passed. And it passed. It, it did it, pass. It made it up the hill. It's yeah. got a gear drive inside of mm -hmm. the hub and that helps the motor keep spinning faster and it keeps it from getting bogged down and just plain stopping. Yeah. And to me, that's the ultimate difference is, am I gonna have to finish the hill by walking up the hill or am I gonna get to finish the hill by riding up the hill? Yeah. It passed. Considering it has these massive brakes, how did it do in the braking test? It actually did better than average for the whole fleet. It did, uh, did 13.7 feet. The stopping distance for like the average scooter we would test is in the sort of 15 feet range. Mm -hmm. And this actually beats that at 13.4 yeah. feet. Yeah, I think anything that's like even close to 12 or less is like the best we can even do. And mm -hmm. so 13 is like pretty legit. You know, I think for brake, I would give it high marks. Yep. The Fido Q1S has enough range for a daily commute, but goes about the same speed as the average shared scooter. It doesn't have great acceleration or power up hills, but the mechanical disc brakes have exceptional brake feel, especially considering they're not hydraulic. We aren't comparing the Fido Q1S to other scooters we've tested in this review because it's so unique, but we can't help ourselves and are matching it against popular scooters in the upcoming deep dive. Join us on the ESG live show for that performance comparison. Chuck, what did you feel about the overall build quality? I, again, you know, I, for all the sections of this scooter, I think that the, the base of this scooter is so good. And then there, there's always a couple little things that I don't love. And so for build quality, the real construction, you know, the welding, how solid it feels, the folding mechanism, I give this thing top marks. I just don't like the fenders mm -hmm. and I don't like the display. It just seems kind of cheap, the display. I mean, it works, but the frame of it, mm -hmm. I think is as good as any scooter I've seen. Yeah, I was really impressed to discover that it's an aluminum frame. In fact, I had to go grab a magnet and try mm. to stick it to it to convince myself that it really mm. was aluminum because uh -huh. at the price point, I was surprised. That's that's a lot of work to make a nice frame out of aluminum like this. And, you know, yeah. it can really take a punch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so it does have an alarm and a remote control. And so uh, to turn the scooter on, you give it a couple clicks here and it beeps at you and lets you know that- uh, Here is the, um, the, the, the lightning, lightning bolt. Symbol, right? Yeah. Yep. And so, and then to lock it, you, uh, you push the, the lock symbol and that also arms uh, the alarm system. And then if you give it a little shake, it warns you one time, and if you give it another shake, then it kind of goes on and on, about oh. 15 seconds total. Oh, and so one of the things that surprised me is there just there are no P settings at all. The expression is it's a black box, which is you can't really adjust anything on. 
which is, I wouldn't feel like it's missing, it's just we've become so used to it on scooters, yeah. being able to adjust you know, how the acceleration hits, whether you can turn on the regen or off. It's a zero start scooter, mm -hmm. and zero start is always on, you can't even disable yeah. that. There's, no, there's nothing you can really do except for the cruise control button, mm -hmm. and, and actually this is the same unit that they've used on the original Gleon Dolly. So it turns out the scooter has a, an IP rating, yeah, and it's uh, IPX4, uh, which is nice. important because that's, you know, it means you can get splash on. Yeah. You're not going to take it through a pressure washer, mm -hmm. not okay, but riding through puddles and kind of light rain, yeah. you're going to do fine. I actually took this scooter home uh, yesterday after the live show. It wasn't raining, but there was a ton of water on the road and everything like that. I never slipped. The fenders did their job. I got maybe 10 little tiny droplets mm -hmm. on my backpack, which is Basically, I consider that nothing, mm -hmm. uh, but nothing on my front, nothing on my back. D it did a good job and it held up. The thing that really struck yeah. me about the seat is just how incredibly solid it is. I mean, mm -hmm. it's basically bolted to almost like a two by four of aluminum mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and it's just bolted straight to it. Um, in other seated scooters that we've ridden, we they were sprung, which they were trying to do the right thing and, and protect us from uh, from shocks and things, but it made it so that it would, it would kind of go side to side That's or roll right. backwards That's when right. you got out of the throttle. And this is just incredibly yeah. solid. It's a great connection to We discovered we do boat. not want the, rock, the canoe rocking no. boat sensation <laughs> on right. these things. That's not, but the padding is just, it's huge. It's got like an inch of travel yeah. on that padding, which really does help with the overall damping of, of, of the ride. Yeah. And it's a, it's just a wide, comfortable seat. It's like the most comfortable seat I, I could imagine, unless you had a little uh, back on it. So for portability, it weighs uh, 39.7 pounds, and I weighed that yeah. with all of the luggage in place. Oh. And so for luggage, we've got you know this little center compartment, and we've got, mm -hmm. the, got the bag on the front. The center, I found cool. myself just like, using it all the time. This nice. one, I didn't find myself using it very much. In fact, I ended up taking it off. It's gonna bounce around a little more. If you just needed a whole more stuff, you could use mm -hmm. it, but, but this I thought was fantastic. Or you got a chihuahua. Yeah. They and can you can park it. They can, you can use that as your horn. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it's lightweight, and the thing that I noticed was that the diameter of the portion that I'm picking it up I can get my, my hand you know, all the way around the frame of this unit, and I have no problem taking this upstairs. At a, at a, at a 40 pound scooter, it feels like nothing. Like yeah. I don't have any issue picking this thing up at all because the way it's bounced and because it's just so easy to carry. It's got handles everywhere, basically, yeah. on it. Yeah, I also I also think it gets really good marks for portability just because so you can still fold it, and I, I think you can fit it in most trunks, and the folding mechanism is really solid. Like it this is. is not a, a folding mechanism that's gonna like, you know, un unhinge on you. So Chuck, it sounded like you felt like yeah. the scooter's pretty safe. You know, I look for certain things in a scooter. I look for pneumatic tires. I look for disc brakes. I look for a horn or a bell. I look for a front and a rear light. Those are my big things that I look for. And it has all of those except for one, and that is the rear light. It does not have a rear light. It does have a rear reflector. However, when I ride this, is that is that the seat here actually is really perfect for my little, uh, you know, aftermarket, you know, twenty dollar red flashlight. I just clip it on here, hit start, and then boom, it's flashing at everybody behind me, and I feel great. One of the things that struck me about about safety for this one is that the the 12 inch tires make it more stable than a scooter, and so if you absolutely need to you know scratch your nose or take your hand <laughs> off the, the handlebar for you know for a second, ah, uh, it is more, it is more stable than a scooter. Yeah. Awesome. But overall, yeah, it feels very safe. Again, it's got that great ratio of brakes and, and turning to power that uh, keeps you in a nice yeah. safe zone. It, this is a scooter, you know, my mom tried scooters when mm. I first started and she, she really was so excited. You know, she didn't really love electric scooters. Mm -hmm. I would try to put my mom on this scooter, right? I, I, I would say, hey mom, like what, you wanna try this one? And see how it goes. I'll bet it comes out Chuck tested and mother approved. <laughs> That's a good one. The Fido just makes me want to smile. It's a carefree cruiser. I don't have to change where I'm standing to feel more comfortable or bend my knees when hitting bumps. The twist throttle is very easy to use, and I like that it doesn't take up the whole length of the handlebar like some other twist throttles. It feels really, really well built, except for the fenders. I don't care that the display is really simple because I'm not paying attention to it anyway, but for the price, I would have expected something a little fancier. I absolutely love that it has storage and lots of it. Overall, the Fido is a solid seated scooter for someone like me, 
but let's find out if it's big dog approved. Hey everyone, Red Mirror here with the electric scooter guy and this is Red Mirror Ride Report on a Fido Q1S. It's cool, I like it. It has some things about it that's not so great and some things that are great. Like one thing I like for sure is this throttle. The twist throttle is not like other scooters where you twist the whole handle and you kind of go crazy like I had an accident with a, another scooter where I twisted the whole handle and it just shot off. But with this one, have it being like one third of, of the handle, you know, it's nice and you kind of always get to it right here. Braking system is pretty, pretty stout. Like when I first did my little brake test, I did a hard slam on the brake and I almost went over the front. That's cool, I like that. I like this, that safetyness on it. Oh, he just, oh, he, he just want to stunt. He just want to stunt on his e-bike. That's all right. Dual Motor Fido is coming next month. I'm going to be on his helmet. But anyway, you know, as a big dog, you kind of want to be safe on these scooters. You really need to stop on a dime, and you can do that on a scooter. But with that being said about big dogs, the suspension is there. Like, it kind of holds you up tight. It has some real nice tires. When you're on the road, it's nice and smooth. It's not really jarring. But the performance is not there. Being a big dog, riding on this, you kind of look cool, but when you're going up the hill and you're going 10 miles per hour, sitting down, it just doesn't look right and it just doesn't feel right. This, you kind of wanted to go a little bit faster because it looks so good. People are automatically going to stare at you. So you kind of wanted to have that power, that performance, and it's, it's somewhat lacking. But to find out if it's big dog approved or not, hit up the ESG website. Overall pros include built-in storage, massive disc brakes, fun and leisurely ride. Overall cons include flimsy fenders, lackluster display, and motor hum. The Fido Q1S is flat out fun. It's not fun in a thrilling way, but fun in a chilling way. The display and operation isn't complicated, the acceleration is super smooth, and the brakes are responsive. Along with that cushy seat and dual suspension, it's a cute, comfortable cruiser. Not only is it fun to ride, but you can bring the fun with you as the Fido is the first SUV we've had the pleasure of testing. What's your take on the Fido Q1S? Let us know in the comments. If you want a more in-depth account of the Fido, including a comparison of it against popular scooters in its price range, join us on the ESG Live Show for the deep dive. This is Chuck with Electric Scooter Guide. Ride safe and don't forget to wear your helmet. To check out the only other scooter that we've sat on, watch our updated review of the eMove Touring. And if you're looking for scooters but don't know where to start, check out the ultimate beginner's guide to finding the perfect electric scooter.